Gift Biz Unwrapped, Episode 22. People are buying you. Hi, this is John Lee Dumas of Entrepreneur on Fire, and you're listening to Gift Biz Unwrapped, and now it's time to light it up. Welcome to Gift Biz Unwrapped, your source for industry-specific insights and advice to develop and grow your business. And now, here's your host, Sue Monheit. Hi there, I'm Sue, and welcome to the Gift Biz Unwrapped podcast. Whether you own a brick-and-mortar store, sell online, or are just getting started, you'll discover new insight to gain traction and to grow your business. Today, I'm joined by Lana Horton of Make a Memory. Lana is 69, and she looks back and wonders where her time went. She has two children in businesses of their own and four wonderful grandchildren. Lana started her business at 23 with $2,000. It was an all-inclusive bridal shop and became the largest store in Ohio and the only one to carry exclusive designs from Paris. She sold the store with a large profit when she decided to move to California, stay at home, and raise her children. But that didn't last long. She then started Punch Connection and invented a tool that was patented. That business led to infomercials with the first show selling 250,000 kits in one airing. Over the next 10 years, Lana sold products on QVC, HSN, and Lifetime. Then she retired, wanting to spend time with her grandchildren. And as little ones always do, they began to grow up and Lana again found herself with time to spare. She talked with her daughter about a new business idea she had, and that is how Make a Memory was born. They are now in their fourth year of this family business, and she says they, quote, work together like oil. Welcome to the show, Lana. Well, thank you very much. Gee, that sounded pretty good. I didn't realize that was me. (laughs) Well, that's all you. (laughs) What I would love for you to do right now is tell everybody what Make a Memory is all about. Well, Make a Memory is just that. Make a Memory is a memory animal that we sell to little cheer girls from 5 to 12 years old. They love everything. They love bows. They love animals. They love earrings. And so what I did is I invented a stuffed animal, and they're 20 inches tall, and they are a small mini-me. We're going to get into your whole story as we move on here. Our listeners know we like to align the conversation around the life of a motivational candle. The light shines on you while you share your stories and experiences. So, Lana, shall we light it up? Let's light it up. Perfect. Tell us, what color is your candle? My candle, of course, would be yellow. Of course. Why yellow? Well, yellow is happiness. Yellow brings you light, it brings you happiness, and it brings you a glow within yourself. And that's me. That's my personality. I'm just a yellow person. I'll give you a little secret. That's my favorite color, too. (laughs) See there? (laughs) Shakers and the doers, we're yellow. (laughs) There you go. (laughs) And what quote is on your candle? Well, you know, I I debated on quotes because there's a couple that I use. And I think probably my favorite quote is by Harry Truman. I say it to my children all the time. And he says, it's amazing what you can accomplish if you do not care who gets the credit. I just live by that because you don't have to be a me person to get something accomplished. Right. You can take your ego out and just go for the goal. And do you know how much further you're going to go? Yeah, you're right. It's looking at that the end of that line, and that's how I've always lived. I know what I did. Old Harry and I had that in common. <laughs> <laughs> that's wonderful. And I think that to have that, you have to be very self-confident. If you know these people who continually need reinforcement and reinforcement, you know, they're doing a good job and they take credit because it was their work. I'm not sure that in this entrepreneurial world of ours, those people will go as far as someone with the attitude that you're talking about here today. Well, I call them attaboys and I don't need them in my life. I don't have time for them. I don't need to tap them on the back and say, oh, you know, you've just done so well today. I like the ones that know where they're coming from, know what they want and go for it. Let's go back, Lana, to the beginning of your journey, but the beginning of your journey with Make a Memory, because I have to say, I've known you for a few years now, and I had no idea 
of all the detail of your past. We've talked some about these things, but there's a lot going on before you got to make a memory. <laughs> well, there's a lot of years in there too before I got to make a memory. <laughs> but so, so you're home with the grandchildren and then all of a sudden they start getting involved in all their various things and get social and all of that. And tell us how this idea came to you about what Make a Memory is and how the whole company got established. Well, my daughter's company is fundraisers. And so her main person that she works with are the Pop Warners and the All-American football players and so on and so forth. Well, to be able to get into those establishments, you kind of have to have a little door open. And of course, they love her. She's been in business for 14, 15 years, and she stays very busy. But I saw an avenue where I could go in and give them something that they don't get. And what that is, is these little girls at the end of their season, which they cheer for 10 games. And then at the end of the season, they have what they call a cheer off. And the cheer off only out of maybe 2000 children become the winners. And then they're the ones, of course, that get the trophies. Well, we have all these little girls that are going home with nothing in their hands. And they've had all of their curls and all of their uniforms. And so I decided they each needed something to make a memory. And so that's how it was born. And so to make a memory, I knew I was dealing with a lot of the same girls. I would get a new set every year because so many would graduate, but then we always would have new ones that would coming in. And so I found my largest tool for working was just listening, listening to what the girls wanted, listening to the excitement of, oh my goodness, I can hardly hold her. And they would hug them and the mothers would say, you know, we're hanging this on the wall now, don't get it dirty. Or I would see them playing catch with them back and forth. So I started out with three animals because I felt that I could control this. Now, I want you to remember that I started this four years ago. Every year we have doubled and the animals are now costing $29 a piece. And I'm now selling over 3,000 of them. So within this amount of time, which is 11 shows, and it's about six weeks. As you do the math a little bit, you can see I sometimes make as much as a person does that's working all year. And the best part is I'm working with my family. We go together, we set up together, break down together. We all do the math. My grandson, he is in charge of doing all of the dollar control of how much is something is costing us and what is our percentage and what are we doing for this show. Then I also found out as the children would come, they would say, oh, mom, I've got the panda and I've got the bear and I've got the dog. And so I knew that I would retire them. So now the people know that after two years, something gets retired. So if you're going to get it, and I say on their flyer, this is going to be retired this year. If you want it, get it now. Now, probably one of my largest expenses, which was one of my daughter's best ideas, is we have what they call a large meeting for all of the cities. When you do Pop Warner, these are leagues and these are cities. I take a sample and give it to free to every single city. And I put their names, I put their colors. And Sue, this is when you have been a lifesaver for me because one of the things I added two years ago was I added that I could put their name on these bears. Now, what child in the world doesn't want something with their name on it? What mother in the world doesn't want something personalized with the child's name and the date and what they did? And the only way they can go and get their names on it if they pre-sale. Gotcha. There's a couple of things that I want to point out here that are really interesting. First off, you talk about that you make a salary that could be an annual salary for someone only in a short amount of time. Given the planning stages, getting the orders, and then producing everything, how long is your business really up every year? I will start on skirts now, which is we're in August, and then I will run August, September, and October. I have to be, have everything ready to go. I would say probably three months out of the year, I'm giving it my undivided attention. So three months and you're making pretty much an annual salary 
And then you've got a bunch of time. I know you just go off down to Mexico or do some other fun thing. So, well, I, I own two condos down in Mexico and I got them because I love the ocean and I wanted somewhere where I could just kick back and go out in the boat in the ocean and all that. Well, they've turned out that everyone loves them so much that they are now rentals. So whenever they're open, I go back and scoop up my little bit of paradise. But that too has turned into something that is a moneymaker. You have to remember that when a person reaches a certain age and they go on social security, their whole life changes. It's like all of a sudden you wake up and your whole life has changed. And so I learned that I had to reinvent myself. If I wanted to live the lifestyle, I had to come up and depend on myself again. Now, did I have it planned before I retired? Absolutely. But even though I had that planned, let's face it, I like to spend money. (laughs) <laughs> I like nice things. And so to get those things, Social Security and I were just not cutting it. So <laughs> I had to go back and do a little bit. But, you know, it's really a work of love. I absolutely, totally love what I'm doing. And because I've stayed in the craft world, most craft people, they don't know how to sell. They put all of their love and they put all of that time into an item and they don't take the time that it's it's taken to make it. They don't take the time of how much it's cost them, you know, to put it on. And that's what a craft person is. And they usually cannot sell anything. If you go to a craft show, oh my goodness, what they're charging for something that should be $50, you're going to pick it up for $10 and $11 because of their self-worth. They think, oh, I made that by hand. It's not worth anything. This is a really good point, Lana. And Gift Biz listeners, if any of you are in the craft industry, take heed of what Lana's saying because what she's talking about is, number one, she's able to integrate really a lifestyle business since it's only several months of the year. And by applying business sense, such as how to price your product, a couple of other things that I want to point out that you've talked about, Lana, but by doing some specific things, she's been able to continue to grow her business year after year from what is in essence starting out as a craft, which some of you might be doing right this very minute. The two things that she was talking about, number one is, do you remember when she was just talking about how she shows the bears or the animals and retires them at some point every couple years? You know, every year some animal retires, so that particular style is only around for a certain amount of time. When you do things like that that create exclusivity, people will buy those up because if they don't get them, they're gone. And then, you know, all of us want what we can't have, right? (laughs) Absolutely. Absolutely. So that's one thing. And the other thing you were doing is by sending samples prior to the villages, you're getting people to register in their mind, oh, the time is coming up. And getting a sense of anticipation of the events and then being able to place the order. So a couple of good points for those of you who are thinking about where you can take the crafts that you're making and what you can do to take it to the next level. You know, I have found with my business, with my bears, I not only have a bear, but I make that bear into something that is tangible to them. For instance, every cheerleader has to have a bow in their hair. They have to. Now, they have to have that bow all through practice. Anytime they go to practice, they have to have some kind of bow in their hair. So when they're practicing, they know how to go and do their twist and their turns with a bow. So they get a cheer bow. The cheer bow matches their uniforms to a T. And then under the bear's neck is another cheer bow. So they're already on the clip. All they have to do is clip it off the bear, put it on their head, and they have a cheer bow. So not only are they getting an animal, they're getting something that's tangible that they can use. So then we come down further, and what does every little girl love? Earrings. So now I put every year a different set of earrings. And so they might get a set of pom-poms one year. Now this year, they're getting a cheerleader doing the splits, but I make them that they can take them off and they can wear them. So this is another thing where their $29 is going. Gee, I'm not just buying a stuffed animal. I'm getting a pair of earrings that my daughter is going to love. Then when I get down to the skirt, the waist, I put 
a headband on, a sequin headband. Now, I had to raise my prices this year. Everyone knows that on up everything has gone up. And my rule of thumb is if it goes up a dollar, I have to go up two dollars. So I have to give them something back. So this year I'm giving them a headband. Well, every little girl loves sequin headbands. So I make a deal where I'm cutting three thousand headbands that I get for 30 or 40 cents a piece. But on the other hand, I've raised my prices $2 and they're still getting something more. So this has been a really good selling point. It's not just an animal. When you break it down and you put the cost to it, my heavens, what type of price are they getting for it? You've just now described how these animals look. They're absolutely gorgeous. And I am going to get a photo of one and put it on the show notes page. So when you get back to your computers, anyone who's listening while they're jogging, walking their dog, whatever, go back to your computer and go to giftbizunwrap.com, Lana's show notes page, and I'll have a picture posted for you of one of these bears. Or whichever animal picture she gives me, I'm not sure. (laughs) Well, I will tell you, the hot animal this year is the husky. Everybody's wanting the husky. Oh. And when that happens... When I was talking of pre-orders, of course, for the amount that I do, the reason I push pre-orders is there's no way that day I can get the amount of animals out that I need to make. So on pre-orders, I set them up all week and I have their name on them. I have them in their boxes. Everybody's lined up. I don't have anyone prepay, so they're bringing their money with them. The reason I do that is I also have bracelets and I have necklaces and I have things that they might want to add on where if they've already pre-ordered and paid, they're going to take their animal and they're going to leave. But why I have their credit card out, they might see something else they want to add on. That's a good strategy. That's a really good strategy. You know, add-ons is that extra money that you don't plan on, you know, and they're just exactly that. They're an add-on. And so if I can take my ticket from a $29, which is what I budget on, and I can bring it up to $35, then I'm starting to make some extra money, what I call add-ons. It's just kind of the cream off the top. Sure. Lana, I'm going to take this in a little bit of a different direction now. Sure. We're talking about all these things that you've done and all of them have been so great for growing your business, but there had to be a point along the way when There was a rough spot, something caused trouble, and you had to figure out a way and struggle and overcome to be able to continue going on this path. An entrepreneurial's journey is never a smooth road, (laughs) ever. Can you bring us to one of those times? Tell us something that's happened and how you overcame the situation. Well, you know, I think the largest thing that happened to me, and it went straight to the heart, because as I said, crafters do things out of love. And I had invented the punch connection, which is a punch needle. And I'm sure if anyone is into my age, they will remember because it was a rage. And I put it on one of the first infomercials. Now, I had a patent on it. I knew no one could knock me off. I knew it. I had not a doubt in my mind. Well, within three days, they had another person on television that looked very similar to me. She had needles that were similar, and I was crushed. I thought, how could they do that? Well, you know what? A patent is only as good as that piece of paper. I thought I was so covered. I paid all of that money. I was so far down. And what I learned out of that is pick yourself up, keep going forward. People are buying you. They're buying what you have. They're buying your personality. And if you're able to make that contact with them, which I had the advantage of being able to do it on television, forget about what anyone else is doing and keep going forward. When I had the bridal shop, I opened it with $2,000. Anyone in their right mind after the first year would have gone under. I was too stupid not to realize that I should have closed the doors and I just kept going. So don't let anything stop you. Don't go and because of that first little hitch in the road, make yourself close the doors. Just look at what it was and then keep going forward with it. You'll make it. You'll make it work. I have made every single endeavor pay for itself and then some. 
And it's not so much the taller, but do you know what it is to have the pride to know that my children all work for themselves? If they're going to make a mistake, they have no one else to blame but themselves. If they're going to have the pride, they're going to be able to look and say, I did this. I think the biggest thing that I have accomplished in this world is making my replacement in this world worthwhile. And my children are amazing. So it might be corny, but that's how I believe. Yeah, but you make a good point here in that a lot of people feel like, okay, my business is going to be perfect, you know, before you start out and reality hits. And everyone who is successful kind of gives the appearance that it's been easy and they could do everything. And now it's just been a smooth road and here they are. But for people to know that there are going to be struggles, there are going to be times when you go to bed at night and say, why did I start this? But you get up the next morning, re-energized, and you figure out how to overcome. That's why so many businesses fail because people just go to the wayside. They don't fight through their challenges. Absolutely. And that's the big story that you're presenting here. Well, you know what I think is always so funny, Sue, is people will say to me, oh, you're so lucky. You can choose your own hours. You can go and do what you want to do. And I'm thinking, oh, yeah, would you like me to tell you how many nights I've set up all night? There is no such thing as a 40 hour week when you own your own business becomes your life. But I love it. I call my own shots and I would suggest everyone try it. That's wonderful. On the customer service end, what do you do to make your customers feel unique and valued? I talk to them. I make them feel they are a special friend. So how do you do that? I mean, I know that you are selling mostly at the cheer competitions. So people are probably hovering around the table. They're looking at everything and you probably have a lineup because there's the pre-orders and people are looking. And how are you able to focus on just that person? I don't know if you guys can all hear, but we have a huge thunderstorm going on here right now. So if you hear some big bolts, then you're going to know what it is. I haven't like slipped off my feet or something. (laughs) But but you also will do multiple shows in a week. So you have different people within the Make a Memory business, which are your family members, going off to different shows. Right. So how do you do that at the table when there's a number of people there? How do you make each person feel like you're taking the time for them and still then making sure the other people don't feel ignored? For one thing, we do not work tables. Anyone in the family do not work tables. When we bring in our crew, which, of course, again, is like family, they all have their positions. We have someone that just does pre-orders. We have someone that is selling to people that have not pre-ordered. Then, for instance, if I'm at a show, the most shows you're going to have that we'll accept is three. So I'll take one, my daughter will take one, and my grandson will take one. And what we do is I work the line because the line sometimes can be as long as 40 people. And I'll go up and down the line and thank them for coming. And it'll just be a few more minutes. And gee, you know, your colors are there. And oh, they love to know who is the person that makes all these things. They love it. Mm -hmm. They love to go and give you a hug. And thank you so much for making these for my daughter. And I love it back. I love it back because I know I'm giving something that they want. My daughter does the same thing, and she's much more well-known than I am because they see her not only through the bears, but they see her delivering all the fundraisers, and she's working with these people sometimes two and three times, and then they're amazed by my grandson. The women love him, and, you know, if they want a different skirt or they want something different on it, we'll do it. If they want it, come hell or high water, we will make it. If the little girl has lost her bow, am I going to charge her $3 for another bow? Absolutely not. I'm going to say, here, darling, let me put another one on. And there you go. And they are happy. The mother is happy. And she's going to go back and tell five of her best friends what wonderful people we are that we did not even charge them for another bow. That type of conversation is priceless. Oh, it's a selling point. It's what you do. And that's why I say I'm a yellow candle. There you go.
One thing I want everybody to take note of is a little bit different way of working a table at a trade show or at a booth. There's positions. I think I heard you talk about three pre-orders, then people who are doing new sales, and then you or your daughter or your grandson working the line. So everyone's feeling like they're being recognized. They're important. And I think when you do that, people understand that there are other people who need to be helped as well. People just don't want to feel ignored. No, because the worst thing that can happen is they walk away. Exactly. You know, if you just even go and give them a nod or say I'm working a trade show that I'm selling a product for my daughter and she is trying to get the leagues in. And so she and I will work it together and we might be having three or four cookies and different things. I always, and she does the same thing, we'll divide the booth And we always acknowledge, even though we're speaking, we always have that eye out to the outside where I give them a nod of the head or I, you know, give them a little wave of the hand or something that they know they're part of it. Oh, do you have a great school too? Hey, come on in and listen to this because you guys are going to love this. This is a no brainer. That type of thing. Yeah, that keeps them there. Absolutely. And we are always the largest and the busiest booth, no matter where we go. (laughs) That's a sense (laughs) of pride. (laughs) It takes a long time to get there. A long time to get there. (laughs) Oh, darn. You're going to have to work really hard then. (laughs) And we do. By the time we're, oh, that's when you know you're 69. I come home and my daughter's up in the morning just going and I'm laying in bed thinking, oh, I might be dead today. Today is the day. (laughs) Oh, boy. Blow the damn candle out. It's gone. (laughs) Gosh. All right. We're going to roll into the reflection section now. Uh Uh-huh. I think I already know the answer to this, but what is one natural trait you have that has helped you to succeed? My laughter. I see laughter in everything. I love people and I love to be surrounded by people that have joy. And I don't have time in my life for downers. And so probably the thing that has made me succeed the most is my outgoing personality. Laughter and your outgoing personality. And sometimes it's fake. You know, sometimes I'm so tired that I think, oh, gosh, I can't talk to another person. But you know what? Yeah, put that smile on your face. You go back out there and they never know. That's right. And you've got to do it because they deserve that type of interaction, just like the very first person of the day does. Absolutely. And you never know. They might be your largest order. Yeah, you just don't know. (laughs) Yeah, you don't. What tool do you use regularly to help you keep productive or to create some type of balance in your life? Vacations. I make sure that I take time out to just get away. For instance, the family just came back from having a week all-inclusive vacation. Now, I'm getting ready to leave to go back home to see my girlfriends back in Ohio. I make myself get away And there's things in my bucket list I want to do. I haven't done everything yet. And I would say at any age, I mean, you have to take the time to get away because if you don't, you're going to totally burn yourself out. Absolutely. You'll burn out so fast that you'll get to the point that you hate what you're doing. And once that happens, it's time to sell. I also think that to put a little bit of distance, you know how when you go on vacation, it takes like a day or two just to get everything out of your mind or as much as you can. But many times when you create that distance, that's when your new ideas come up. Oh, my heavens, yes. When you clear your mind, you just blank it out, you would be surprised. Now, not necessarily why I'm there, but as the week wears on and I know oh, my blue Hawaiian is just about drank its last drink here, then my brain starts clicking over. You know, then I'm thinking, oh, I've got to go home and I've got to do this and this and this. And if I add that, it's like a recharge. It's like charging your battery back in. That's what vacations do for me. They give me a chance to come all the way down and then I go all the way back. And by the time I have hit the ground off that airplane, I'm running again. Sounds great. What book have you read lately that you think our listeners would find value in? You know, my favorite book, and I have probably read it four times, is The Alchemist. And The Alchemist is a book I think everyone should read. It was written by uh, Paula Cole. It's been translated, I don't know, into 27 or 28 different languages, uh, you know, around the world. 
it's kind of a fable of how he reaches his goals. You can put yourself into every single thing that he's doing and think, well, gee, if I would have done that different, maybe this goal would have happened or that goal. So if anyone wants to read a book that's not a self-help book, it's not a, gee, if you do these 10 steps, this is an actual book that you become part of. And so it's just a wonderful book. It sounds like it. You've never read it? No, I'm going to have to check it out. It's a very small book. I've read it over and over. Both of my children have read it. My grandchildren have read it. We discuss it. He was a brilliant author, just brilliant. Well, Gift Biz listeners, just as you're listening to the podcast today, you can also listen to audiobooks with ease. I've teamed up with Audible for you to get a free audiobook, just like the one that Lana's recommending. All you need to do is go to giftbizbook.com and make a selection. That's giftbizbook.com. Okay, Lana, our time is starting to wind down, and we are coming to my favorite question of all, which is the dare to dream question. I'd like to present you with a virtual gift. It's a magical box containing unlimited possibilities for your future. This is your dream or your goal of almost unreachable heights that you would wish to obtain. Please accept this gift. Open it in our presence. What is inside? Okay, I'm going to open this box very, very slowly because this gift means so much to me. And my gift is health. If I can just have my health, you know, I'm going on 70. I have been very, very active and knock on wood, my health is fine, but I more than anything in the world want to keep my health. I want to stay active. I want to do my exercises. I want to watch my weight. I want to stay healthy. That's what I want. Well, you know what I like about your gift? What's that? For the majority of time, you have control over a lot of those elements. Oh, absolutely. And I just want to stay healthy. I just, without health, what do you have? Well, it's that old saying, if you don't have health, you don't have anything. That's right. And boy, I'm not giving mine up. Love that. So Gift Biz listeners, remember, you can jump over to our show notes page and you'll see a lot of detail of the conversation that we've had here. Also, I'll have a picture of that adorable bear (laughs) or the husky or whoever you're going to send me a picture of. I'm not sure. (laughs) I'll get somebody out to you. (laughs) (laughs) All of that will be over on the show notes page, and you can find that at giftbizunwrapped.com. Thank you so much, Lana, for taking your time today and sharing all of this valuable information with us. It's truly been a gift. And may your candle always burn bright. Oh, thank you, Sue. And you have a great day great day today you too learn how to work smarter while developing and growing your business download our guide called 25 free tools to enhance your business and life it's our gift to you and available at giftbizunwrapped.com slash tools thanks for listening and be sure to join us for the next episode would you like to be on the show or do you know someone who can provide valuable insight from their experiences If so, we'd love to hear from you. All you need to do is submit a form for consideration. You can access the form at giftbizunwrapped.com forward slash guest. That's giftbizunwrapped.com forward slash G-U-E-S-T. Today's show is sponsored by the Ribbon Print Company. Looking for a new income source for your gift business? Customization is more popular now than ever. Brand your products with your logo or print a happy birthday Jessica ribbon to add to a gift right at checkout. It's all done right in your shop or craft studio in seconds. Check out the ribbon print.